Do you family. Do you see? <laughs> I almost choked myself. <laughs> Don't tag me. Do you Don't tag. Do you want to tag me? Yeah, tag me. You were already tagged in, well, the, in the title. You was tagged in the title. All right, yeah, here I go. It. Guys, I'm sharing this to my page. What up? Dr. Will, what's going on, man? Good to see you, my brother. Let me take this off. It's about to get real in here, y'all. It it's about to get real in here. I feel like it here. might even get hot in here. Hot. It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot. It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot. You know? It's interesting. I got this little shoulder pain that's been coming up. For those of you just hopping on right now, go ahead and click the share button because it's about to get real. Um, for those, Oh, what's going on, Carrie? What's going on, Kate? Elizabeth, yeah, Marie, what up? Marco, what's going on, Kate, my man? Carrie, Cassie, Two of my Melinda, favorites. what up? We oh, got yeah. a bunch of the Bridge fam in here, the Stretch yeah. tribe, the Soul School tribe. Yep, it's about to get crazy in here, y'all. So we just getting getting everything situated. Okay, I'm shared, and I am turning this Wi-Fi off. There you go. So Do I it. Focus. Do it. Hi, guys. There she is. <laughs> Do you see that pregnant glow? Do you see that pregnant glow? It's That's actually. It's a pregnant glow, but we have this thing called a diva ring that is lighting me up right now. So there's that. And there's a nuva ring as well, because I got <laughs> I got that in at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah. What up? What up? What up? Hey, hey, Ron. The nuva ring is the thing that goes inside the vagina, correct? Yes, it's a birth control. Yeah, and it like spirals or something like that. Yeah, not really, but yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Carpenter. Why not? What's going on, family? Yeah, Diva Ring. Yeah, Diva Ring is what's up. All right, guys, we're going to quickly jump in because we got some questions too. But we want to talk about some of our top three realizations, lessons from 2017. Emily as... Gallagher. What up? Fresh off the penis. Let's get it. <laughs> uh. if, if anyone is looking for a hot Kiwi gal who says her E's really weird, M Gallagher Teen. is on the market. Teen. Teen. Mm -hmm. Emily. Emily. Fosh and chops. Let's get it. Fosh and chops. Are you guys excited? Who's Shanice. excited? Let's get this. Shanice. Let's get it, y'all. What up? Um, all right, guys. So top three lessons <laughs> from 2017. We're going to talk about them because we're almost in 2018, which is freaking crazy. It is. That we're there. The year like did like that. Who Fast. else feels that? Type yes if you... If you experience your year going by in like seconds. But yes, 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 what yes. What up, Scott? What's going on, family? I'm um, excited. Hi, beautiful couple. Hi, Diana. Uh -huh. Hello. Hello there. Lauren, what up? Yes, yes, Yeah, 2018 yes. is going to be amazing. Hey, let's show them the bumpity bump town. Oh, yeah, there it. we go. Okay, you guys want to see our child? Our child. I'm wearing sweatpants, though. Can you oh, see? You, can, you should take Can you the thing up. The... Show, no, but show it like with your actual... Oh, the bump? Yeah, Without? hold on. I'll let her get ready back there, there. while I talk to you guys. Ready? I there it goes. Ready. There it goes. There. There's a human in there, people. There's our human. It's There's happening. our human. <laughs> he literally does that every single morning. It's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, there's a little human in there baking, which is pretty rad. Yes. Um, this is a side note. This is not one of my lessons. I mean, it is a lesson, but it's not one of my big ones. But how freaking cool is the human body it is. that we can do this? It's super cool. And not just women, by the way. Like, the fact that a man and a woman can come together and create life. Uh-huh. I don't know. It's one of those things you're like, yeah, that's cool, conceptually. And then you do it, and you're like, holy shit. Yes. We, we are magical. We are super magical. <laughs> my sperm flew throughout my body into your body. It did. And then it created... A, a person. A human. That is just nuts. That's going to be giant like us one day. Yeah. And have it's all ridiculous. sorts of stuff happening. Uh-huh. It's pretty crazy. Uh-huh. There are so many good people on <laughs> I this. I know. You guys are beasting right now. This yeah. is like... Yeah. Suniva, Ali, Danielle. What up? What up? Mm-hmm. It was mostly me, though. It nah, was. It was mostly... Do you see these cheekbones? Do you see this beautiful <laughs> chocolate skin just sitting here like, let's get it. Um... <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we're excited. We're excited. We've already learned some pretty powerful lessons uh, yes. from the parent perspective, and we're gonna we're gonna dive into some of the questions and stuff like that. But first and foremost, we want to go over the top three lessons of 2018 from each of us. 2017. So, 2017. Not, there we go. We're not there. Moving yet. into 2018. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, would you like to start? Um. Sure. Great. So, <laughs> lesson number one. 
that just rocked my world and really supported me in leveling up and 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 I will take this into 2018 as well is um progress over perfection mm. right just really owning chipping away at the mountain really owning just being in the dance you know I, I think a lot of us can get caught up in getting ready to get ready and 2017 really showed me that if, if I just focused on putting one foot in front of the other and delivering my gifts to the best of my abilities at any given moment that that would create progress and that progress would create confidence and that confidence people would come to see from miles away and so yes yeah progress over perfection is number one for me. Hell yeah. I love yeah. that. Um, I'm actually, I have like a cousin to that one. You got a cousin. <laughs> I got a cousin to uh -oh, one of those. A um, little incest in here. Yes. <laughs> um, mine is actually one that has deepened for me since being pregnant. Mm -hmm. And it's truly that anything worth creating takes a certain amount of pain and discomfort. Mm. And um, perfect metaphor of being pregnant, you know, as a woman's body is literally readjusting. So like the hips widen, the sacrum changes, yep. um, everything literally shifts. The belly obviously expands, but so much more is happening hormonally. And there's all these things that are dis that are um, uncomfortable or can be uncomfortable because you're not used to them. So it's a new level that you're kind of stepping into. And that's what's required to make room for new life to be born. Mm. And it's so funny because I was talking to my acupuncturist, I can say that now because mm -hmm. I have one, um, Alyssa, who's an amazing woman based in Santa Monica here. And we were talking last night and she's saying, you know, how have you been doing with the pregnancy? And I said, honestly, I feel really good. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, you know, it's a mindset thing. And da, da, da. I said, you know what? I think it is because I've been in the practice mm -hmm. of expecting pain and discomfort to create anything worthwhile. Yep. Like that's the life of an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Life of an <laughs> entrepreneur is you literally have to love getting uncomfortable, yeah. love the pain as a part of the process to create anything worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for being pregnant. Like, do I have moments where I'm like, oh, I could totally be that woman mm -hmm. that's like annoying and like, oh, everything sucks because this is happening and my feet hurt and blah, blah. Yeah, I have those moments where I recognize I could lean into that, yep. but I'm like, but I'm creating a human. Yep. So that lesson is both in pregnancy, in life, and in business, and in relationship too. Like, think about our relationship. Shit is painful sometimes. It is. Right? It is. It's, it can get really painful. It can get real up in here. Yeah, uh, saying. Um, <laughs> it's, oh, hey, Lisa, see. Laura Madden. Um, uh, Miriam said, wait until menopause. Oh, yeah, and that's a whole other game. Uh -huh. Right? Like, our bodies are constantly shifting. And that's a whole other thing, too, is like our relationship with our bodies and age. Yeah. And just all of it. Yeah, and it's just so speaking good. to pregnancy as well. Um, and by the way, these are our awesome glasses that help us at night sleep better if you if you are in front of a screen what does it do it like blocks out a certain light they're yeah. like blue blockers so it blocks out um, that electromagnetic frequency light that keeps your brain up and activated so if you're watching TV or on your phone or whatever mm -hmm. past like they say seven o'clock if you go to bed at 10 mm -hmm. your brain is still active which you're not getting full are you mm -hmm. so, so. do you guys ever have any moments of real arguing yes yes we do <laughs> Uh, how do you handle that if you do? Um, well, first, it's it's like, you know, we argue. <laughs> and then, We're humans. And then we get that, you know, it's just passing through like everything else and that it's not necessary for us to hold on to certain things. And both of us ask ourselves, what is this here to teach me about me? You know, because it, in essence, I'm in relationship with Alexi, but I'm really in relationship with myself to Alexi. Totally. And so, um, you know... Contrast is one of the most beautiful things we could we, we've ever asked for and Alexi offers contrast for me Why because she wasn't raised by who I was raised by at the time that I was raised by them She has not walked a mile in my moccasins and neither have I in hers and that's what attracts us to each other So yes, we argue. Yes, there's contrast and yes um, we're both willing to sidestep the substitute us which is the ego and step back in. Preston Hall has to apologize because he's <laughs> wrong the majority of the time. Not even close. And you already know. You already Not know. Not even close. Happy wife, happy life. That's, <laughs> I'm gonna that's some bullshit. That, though, We're going like, to change that. A lot of people in relationship run from argument and are afraid of argument. But truly, argument, 
at its core, when it's nonviolent, is a disagreement. And a disagreement is an opportunity to truly find, not necessarily common ground, but to find understanding. Oh, no. No, nope, there it is. <laughs> what is it on? This freaking thing. Here. It's not that. It's this neck thing. Hold on, guys. It's we're working, working some stuff out. Here. You got to bend it this way, babe. And then we'll step back this way. There we go. We'll step Good back. Time. Now you're going to make me short. I don't have a head. You see this? <laughs> She's going to take my head off of me. Well, something happened. We need to fix the diva ring. The diva ring has been through Good. it. It's been in storage for a while. But I just want to complete this thought by saying, guys, relationship, disagreement, arguments, when done in a compassionate way, it's a beautiful um, playing ground for understanding and actually deepening your love and deepening your commitment and deepening your presence to another being who has a totally different life. Because mm -hmm. our job is not to change anybody and to make them more like us because the minute they're more like us, we'll stop being in love with them mm. because they're boring. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll go, I don't know what happened. They're perfect, but I'm just not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because you made them you and being in a relationship with yourself all the time. You're already in one. Why do you need another one? Yep. So yep. there's that. Lesson number two of 2018 that changed the game for me. And has helped and supported me in, you know, living a, a life of my dreams. Like Alexi and I were walking uh, on the beach the other day. And I forget the order in which I said it, but I was explaining to her as we were walking on the beach. For me, when I thought of a dream life, it was living by the beach, being able to surf every day, meeting and co-creating with the love of my life, having beautiful children, and having a purpose on the planet that is of service while receiving the monetary value of what I am giving to the world. And like, when I look at that and look at my life, I literally have all of those. Check, 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 check. Mm -hmm. And so, with or without those, and I think that one of the biggest things that, that has really supported me in 2017 is doing my absolute best to operate from all needs met right now. You know, in conversations with God, there's a line in there that blew me away and it continues to blow me away. And that is, you cannot have what you want, but you may experience what you have. Mm -hmm. And that line, when I read it fucking six years ago, over long ago, blew me away. But like, as I step deeper into my own awareness, it hits me even further that when I'm focused on being abundance, when I'm focused on being love, when I'm focused on being organizing harmony, that the universe, Allah, Krishna, whatever name is more potent for anybody, that, that energy, that love intelligence has no choice but to meet me there mm -hmm. and match that frequency over and over and over again. And so I'm living in, swimming in the magic of my own conscious choice to be abundant no matter what is there. Mm. Love it. Love it. <clears throat> get it. Get, get You can't pick me up from the belly I know. Anymore. I wanted to. I wanted to. I wanted to. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, and again, a close cousin of that. Bring the cousins. Which is so interesting. Incest. <laughs> Harry Krishna. <laughs> and we, we went to go see the Harry Krishna documentary. Very interesting. It's Please amazing. go watch it. Yeah. Um, Alex Tripod, what up? Um, Jess, yes, yes. So my number two lesson from 2017 is get out of your own damn way. Mm -hmm. And um, this is manifested for me in so many different ways. But the biggest way is like there's the human me, the Alexi, the ego part of me that has its fears it's uh, judgments, it's tiredness, it's I don't feel like it, it's reasons, it's excuses. Like, I'm human, I have all that stuff. But then there's like the higher self part of me, the spirit yep. self part of me that's like, um, cool, but none of that applies up here. Mm -hmm. Like, we're playing a bigger game up here. Yep. There, this up here, the spirit self, which we all have, by the way, it's not just me, spirit self is connected and tapped into the infinite store the infinite abundance of everything that is everything yes so while i may get up and not feel like it the spirit self has access to all resources yes well i may get up and not want to do the thing that i promised myself i would do because i said i would and da, 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 the spirit self goes cool 
But we're on it. We're already moving and making waves. Yes. So just get out of your own way. Just get out of the ego. Stop mm -hmm. re-identifying as the ego. Stop putting all these complaints and concerns and fears out there in the world as if they're real. Yep. Because it's just your ego playing a game, mm. getting in the way of what's already coming through you. Get him. So for me, that's been huge. It's like, Lex, ego Lex, you're cool, but not right now. I see you. I see you, <laughs> but not right now. <laughs> We're going to move and make room for what needs to come through, which is so much bigger than this will ever be. Uh -huh. yeah. Lesson number three. We're going to do these. And guys, type. Keep typing. Like you, like, let, type some stuff. Let the church say amen. When something hits you, amen. go ahead and type yes, yes. Wow. Or whatever it is. Or infinite love and gratitude, as Miriam would say. Or hell yes. Or yes. give us a cool emoji. Exactly. Yes. Lesson number three for me for 2017 that created so much abundance in my life was the power of focus, the power of bringing it in from the 750 million ideas I have about all the things I want to do. <laughs> so many ideas. Narrowing it down to what is most important right now and how can I be of service to that. Yes, Lord. Right? What is the lead <laughs> domino? What is the thing that will create space and room for everything else and knock that down one by one by one? Mm. Jim Rome said it, and I say it all the time. He said, when you make room for your gifts, your gifts will make room for you. Yes. We are, I am, the living embodiment of this. This year, 2017, I made room for my gifts. I got more focused. Mm -hmm. I, I pulled it in a little bit. I stopped hanging out as much. I stopped uh, doing stuff that didn't matter as much. I stopped beating myself up for not answering certain emails or calls or being here or being That's there. Huge. <laughs> huge and got alone. focused on what it was that was calling me forward, that thing that was tapping me on the shoulder, the thing that was handwritten on my soul. I stepped in and stayed focused, and that thing made room and is making room for everything else. Rastafari! Get Let's it, get it. Blah, get it, baby. Blah, blah. <laughs> Let's go. Focus, Let's go. focus is everything. That is huge. Um, you know what's interesting, too, just speaking on focus, when you get maniacally focused on something, yep. Everything else falls away yep. and people go, I don't understand how you guys create so much and how you do so much and <laughs> how you're pregnant and how you're doing this. And do yes. It's like focus. Side note, she is doing everything they ask you not to do as you're pregnant. I am. And which is my lesson number three. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Bring it. <laughs> but you bring can keep going no, no, and I'll it. just step in. No, no. Okay. I just wanted to acknowledge you because <laughs> all the stuff they say like, oh, you need to just not move and just sit there and be pregnant and Should like travel. Yeah. <laughs> we, meanwhile, our little baby has been to like 10 countries already. Already. Um, work schedules of 14 to 18 hour days. Like, and I still am listening to my body and resting and doing what needs to be done. So my lesson number three for 2017 is do not believe all the shit that you are told. Yes. Stop saying yes to the fucking stories that have been planted in front of you in society and yes. going, well, that's just how it is. No, that's just the mentality of somebody who didn't want to play. Oof. That's it. Mm. So I'm starting to really see, really see how many little stories are peppered in the world that I've just kind of walked into yep. as a woman, mm -hmm. as an adult, as a human, living where I live, mm -hmm. being where I'm from, having a baby now. Oh, pregnancy is this. Mm -hmm. You'll see how hard it is. Yep. You'll see how uncomfortable it is in your body. And it's like, mm, yeah, no, actually, I don't see that because that's not my reality. Uh. And I'm also starting to really unpack this when it comes to beauty, uh, when it comes to body, when it comes to career and success for feminine leadership and, and empowerment, when it comes to money, when it comes to yep. resources, when it comes to competition versus collaboration. Yes. All of these fucking <laughs> stories that we are living into have been planted for us and we just buy it hook, line and sinker. Why? Because mm. it's easy. Mm. Why? Because everybody will agree with us and say, yeah, that's just how it is. It is true. Reality. Yeah. It's reality. It's guys. really hard. You have to be realistic. Yes. Do I? If your version of realistic is shit and I don't agree with that, do I actually have to be your version of realistic? Yep. Cause that doesn't work for me. So I'm going to write my own story, make it feel how I want it to feel and actually create my own reality mm. based on that. Get him. So that's mine. All right, we're going to Q and A. So you guys can write your questions in there, but we're going to go to a couple of them that are over here. Um, Lisa said, Lisa Wedlake said, "How do you attract the men you want and fix yourself so you're in their level?" 
Or at their level. Or at their level. Um, okay, so... Can I just put a little thing do it, in there? Do it. You're not broken. Yeah, that was what I was going to say. Okay, so, so go you ahead. finish it. No, no, you got it. You got it. <laughs> uh, so Whoa! Diva ring, relax. Exactly. We love you. So one of the things I was going to say, uh, I'll, I'll sort of take that to just a, l l linguistics, right? So we build with our language. We build worlds with our language. And so this idea of needing to be fixed, right, as if the men you are looking for are... Um, they, that, like they don't have issues as like well. Like they're perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I will repeat that line from Conversations with God, book one. You, you may not have what you want, but you may experience what you have. Yeah. And so if you have abundance, if you're experiencing abundance, if you are looking for abundance, then abundance must, must find you. Must be your reality. Yes, everywhere you look, including the men that come into your vortex. So that's that. Yeah, um, uh, Kendall just asked, how do you feel more comfortable being yourself? My expression is dancing in public, but I'm afraid of others' responses. Girl, get out there and start dancing. Mm -hmm. Like, the only way out is through, and the more you start kind of leaning into the discomfort and fear, ten, ten paces down the line, you'll go, I don't even realize why I was so afraid of that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think of some of the stuff that we do now yep. that would have scared the shit out of me five years ago. Big time. Ten years ago. And now I'm just like, that? Yep. You, because we've done it so much. So, Kendall, get out there. Go out and find yourself a subway, a street corner. Sing as loud as you can. Dance as much as you can. And you'll start to realize that you can create a ripple effect of joy in other people. And that will be way more worthwhile than your fear of what they think about you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Henrik said, what is the best advantage you get in your personal growth from traveling a lot? So, Henrik, I would say that... Um, there's many, but one of the just first ones is the moment we are outside of our routines, we are forced to face life in a different way, mm -hmm. right? Because if you know, like for instance, all of you, if you walked into your house right now, it was pitch black, you would know, you would walk in the house and you would literally know exactly where the light switch is because you've been doing this routine, right? And I just made a video about this, about the, the study they did with the fleas in the jar and how they put fleas in a jar and for three days the fleas would jump up and hit the top of the jar trying to get out. Mm -hmm. But after the third day, the fleas would stop jumping they would only jump high enough but they would not hit the top and then you could remove the lid and they would never jump out and so trained. exactly so the idea henrik for me for us in travel is it forces one to jump out of the constructs that we have been served on a platter i was having a conversation last night about um, the continent of Africa, but particular countries. And there were some people who were having a conversation that was coming from a place that was not as, um, they were not as educated as I was because I've been there and I understand that just like Australia, we were fed an idea about what Australia totally. was. I thought Australia was always hot. We got there as cold as shit, <laughs> right? It snows in Australia. Most of us don't know that. Why? Because we've been fed a story about what it is. So travel opens that, that container up and forces us to get out of our routines and out of our routines is where all of the growth happens. Yeah, and I'll add to that. Travel for me, I've been traveling extensively. I'm on my third passport um, since I was about 17 years old. And for me, travel has unequivocally opened up this idea of what human compassion really is. Because I meet people from all over the world, from all different religious backgrounds, from different socio-economical back backgrounds, um, different colors, different uh, living environments, different everything. And yet the common thread that I'm always so blown away by is the fact that we all essentially and inherently want the same things. And every time I see that, I'm reminded that we're all human. Every time I see that, I'm reminded that any story that's been programmed into my mind about a certain culture, religion, background, um, image, color, X, Y, and Z, anything of that that's been programmed in here didn't know the story behind the human. And every time I get to know the story behind a different human, it reminds me of our, our common unity, our global community. Bam, okay. You wanna read that one? Yeah. Do something most days that's out of your comfort zone, I say to many people, and I live by it too. 
Actually, let's go with some of these questions over okay, here. Yes. Marco. Uh, Marco, how can people find inner peace in a challenging world? Um, that's a great question and a huge question um, to unpack it as much as we can in T minus three minutes. <laughs> um, inner peace, the minute you're seeking inner peace is the moment you don't have it. So inner peace is truly about a level of contentment and appreciation and acceptance of what is. And what is creates a sense of peace. Because here's the thing, life is going to keep on lifing. And uh, maybe scroll down, Preston is just screwing us all up. What the fuck? <laughs> we can't see anything right now because Preston touched something, but hopefully we're still on there. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Do this. Invite oh. Emily, and then Emily just don't get on. Oh. And then see what happens. Sent. Nope. Oh. There we go. There we go. Oh. Now just unlock it. There we go. This is why the oh. wife is around. <laughs> she fixes stuff. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so inner peace in a challenging world, the idea that the world is challenging is the, the, the separation from peace. What if the world is just the world? What if the world is just showing up in what's necessary right now for our highest evolution and expression? What if it's just what it is and we can accept it which acceptance doesn't mean do nothing. We accept it and we can show up to what is and say, great, how can I bring more love to this? Mm -hmm. Even if love is already deemed there and available, how can I bring more love to this? How can I deepen my depth of understanding and compassion right now? But first, accepting and embracing what's here. That's peace to me. Mm -hmm. um, let's go with Elizabeth. She said, uh, detaching from... The outcome of your goals mm -hmm. as the end of the year approaches, I've been disappointed slash angry about goals I set in January that still haven't been achieved. What you got on that, babes? So, um, Elizabeth, I would say that mm, everything is feedback and how you receive that feedback determines on what happens next. And so you can be, there's anger, and here's the thing, we've, we've given anger a really bad name. Mm -hmm. Anger is a core emotion that all humans experience. Now you can have that anger be something that uh, is, is a tombstone and makes you, you know, sort of fold and, and just get mad at yourself and give up, or you can have that anger be a stepping stone. And so the choice is yours. Yes, get upset. Get upset and also take inventory because... And then, and here's the, the trickiest cosmic joke of the whole thing, I think I just wrote this on Facebook literally like an hour ago. Some games are not set up for us to win at all. Mm. Some things are beyond gaming. Yeah. Some things are just, it's just isness. And you know, you can look at what wasn't achieved or you can look at what was. Mm. You can look at how you were used in 2017 to support humanity. Or you can, how your gifts were deepened in a way that you can bring yourself to that same goal yes. in a different and more effective way. Exactly. And I, it reminds me, um, I think it was 2008 when I you know, decided that you know, some part of me, was, I was going to be a thought leader and all of these things and a speaker and I was going to be huge. And from my egoic standpoint, from the, from the Preston that wanted to be seen, I thought I was ready. But my soul knew different. My soul knew different. And so it didn't happen then. Mm -hmm. All I was doing was sharpening the tool, right? I was sharpening the ax so when I got to the tree, right, I was ready to go. But the ego thought it was ready at that moment. And so you might want to look at 2017 and go, what? And here's the, here's the thing. Hindsight and reflective consciousness is a beautiful thing. And that's what makes us humans, right? Hindsight. But can you, can you create hindsight now? Meaning, can you already look into the future and then come back? Mm -hmm. Right? Because 2023, you may be going, holy shit. I am so grateful it did not work out in 2017 the way I wanted it to. Because in 2018, at the end of 2018, that's when I met the man of my dreams. And he introduced me to this person. And that's when it took off. And that thing did that. You understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. 
Yeah, sometimes the goal is put in front of us yeah. to call us forward into a different way of being that's required to actually get the goal. Yes. So we may not actually hit the goal and get the result we want, but we're getting the result we need. Yeah, you may not have the tools yet. Mm -hmm. And so the, 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 the myopic ego standpoint says, I want to make it now. I need the million now. I need the, the man now. I need the job now. I need the whatever now. And you're being set up for something. And so you can either, you know, rage against the machine or you can surrender, harness, and ride the wave. You can surrender, harness, and ride the wave. Yeah, and there's an interesting thing that um, one of my soul schoolers and business breakthrough girls, Claire, actually just posted, and it was pretty awesome. She said, glass half full, mm. glass half empty. Care about both. Because mm -hmm. the glass is half full, because we get to be grateful for where we're at yes. and who we are and who we've become in the process of that glass yes. being half full. And it's half empty because we also get to be aware of where there's still work and where we still get to move towards and where we still get to fill our cups and yep. where we still get to be in the game and in the dance. So that's a really cool metaphor as well. You know, a lot of people are like, glass half full, always got to be positive. And I saw somebody ask something about law of attraction, always focusing on the positive. There, there's actually a lot of science against that because if you're just focusing on the positive up here in your brain and you've got a whole bunch of negative, which we call ineffective stuff in mm -hmm. here that you're just stuffing down, you're actually attracting from what's being stuffed down and ignored because subconsciously your brain knows it's there. Your body knows it's there. So we get to actually pay attention to what still needs refinement. Yep. Shanina? Shanina, how do you distinguish between... The signs the universe gives you providing you're on the right track and the signs means meaning it's testing you to step up and telling you you need to shift path. That is a great question. So uh, I'll just, I want to start this by saying one of my biggest pet peeves are like when people say, it just wasn't meant to be. <laughs> well, clearly it wasn't meant to be. I mean, it would have happened if it was meant to be, it would have happened. It's like, no. You just didn't do shit about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you just passively sat there and waited for something, the universe, God, source, whatever you want to call it, to hand you something on a silver platter. And when it doesn't happen the exact way you want it, then it just wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. So Shanina, I love that you're asking this question because yep. it means you're in the game. Now, how do we differentiate between knowing when it's time to shift and pivot mm -hmm. and knowing when to keep going? Um, the simple and complex answer is, you know, if you're acting out of scarcity, if you're acting out of a space of, I need to finish this because this is what I committed to and da, 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 and I have to make this happen because this is the thing and I'm so attached to this being the thing, but your soul is calling you in a different direction, then it's time to pivot. If your soul is calling you in a direction yes. and you know that you haven't hit it yet, but you're not technically getting the results that you want but you're still so committed to the, the overall mission and the vision, keep going. Because it's not about the result anyway, it's about the mission. Yep. And this is what a lot of people miss. A lot of people get so hung up mm -hmm. on the result. Oh, I need the result. I need the likes. I need the views. I need the money. I need the yep. people in my workshops. I need the books sold. I need all this stuff. And that means I'm on path. Um, not necessarily. <laughs> not necessarily. If you're truly in it for the mission, if you're truly in it for the vision of what you're up for and up against and up to in the world, then results right now instantaneously don't matter because it's the small. And we're focused on this minute little thing right now instead of the long game. Hmm. For years, we put in work and time and practice and being students and creating and giving and serving without any result that we have now. Yep. And the bottom line is we did it, not for the result anyway. We did it because we had to do it. <laughs> we did it because there was a moral obligation on our souls to get that out. Because it wasn't ours in the first place. It was something that came through that needed to be shared. So if you're on that path and on that mission, just trust the process, mm -hmm. truly, and keep going. Yep. Jess said, you guys ready for baby and shine? Yeah. Freaking excited for your, your baby Jess and your is pregnant too. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, so... Um, it's getting hot. I said it was going to get hot up in here. Interesting about that, Jess, because um, both of us have been, you know, being worked on since the moment this beautiful yes. little being chose us as parents. And one of the things that really hit me hard in the last 24 hours, actually, was that 
our baby is going to be born into expectations. Because mm -hmm. I already caught myself expecting and envisioning all of these ways in which this little being, this sentient being that's called here to do its own work is going to be. I've, I've already caught myself sort of trying to shape how he or she is going to be. And so, um, yes, excited. Yes, we're already being worked on. And yes, it's a beautiful thing. You know, parenthood already is a game changer. And this little freak nugget isn't even out yet. And <laughs> Uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Okay, anybody else have any questions or comments or anything you would like to like us to dive into? Got... Um, thank you, Alexi. Uh huh. Two strippers. <laughs> uh, freak nugget. <laughs> you did say freak nugget. Did I? You did. Um, we have another question on here that was on your feed. How do you successfully start your own business? Get in the damn game. So many people talk, plan, ideate, ideate. Yes. Ideate. Um, tell everybody this is what I'm doing. I'm yeah. working towards this thing, and I'm just waiting for X, Y, and Z to be perfect uh -huh. for it to happen. The only way you get real time feedback is getting real time in the game. Think about like playing a sport. Like sports are such an easy way to truly like encapsulate this. You can talk about playing basketball all day. Yeah. You'd be like, I'm going to play basketball and I'm going to go and I'm going to run down the middle and I'm going to shoot this thing and I'm going to slam dunk it and I'm going to have a layup and you're going to pass it to me and it's going to be amazing and it's going to be all this stuff and everyone's going to cheer and it's going to be great. I'm just waiting for the right shoes. I ordered these shoes off of Nike and they're uh -huh. coming in. I gotta get the right camera before yeah. I start my channel. I, I'm just waiting for uh. the right equipment. Yeah. Cause there's this new ball out that's supposed to be like really amazing. So I'm waiting for that. Um, but it's gonna be great. It's, I feel really good about it. Yeah. Versus actually me throwing whatever I have available on going to the court, getting a ball and playing. Mm -hmm. shooting, seeing how my shot is, seeing how my form is, seeing where there's work that needs to be mm -hmm. done. The only way to get real-time feedback is to start. And so many people with such incredible gifts are just freaking waiting on the sidelines talking about it. And it's so frustrating because there's nothing that we can say that will get them in the game. You have to actually want to play. Yep. So you, you really got to get honest with yourself. Like, do I actually want to play the game? And playing the game means you're setting yourself up to look stupid because you're a beginner. So you're mm -hmm. going to look stupid. You're going to fail forward, which is going to be amazing. Lots of lessons there. And you're not going to have all the answers. Mm. And a lot of people hate that beginner's mindset. They yeah. hate it. Yeah. Because it's so like the ego hates it. Yep. Big time. So it, do you actually want to play or is it just a good idea? Mm -hmm. And one of the things to really own in the space of how do I st start a successful anything is really defining what success means to you. Mm. What does that mean to you? What ideas? Remember er earlier Alexi was talking about how she, one of the lessons for her for 2017 was to bust through the ideas that have already been set up for her. And you get to ask yourself that. What do I mean by success? Do I mean a, a business that's always in the green? Because that's a fucking fantasy. No, <laughs> no business is always in the green. No business is always thriving, right? So you can all immediately take yourself out of a game that cannot be won mm -hmm. and set your own expectations for your successful business, relationship, whatever you want to call it. And so Bianca, how do you know if it's the right relationship? Every relationship you're in is the right relationship for now. The question is, is how do you know when to be bigger than the ego that wants to have you own this person or have this person own you, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, everything will die. Everything is transitory. Everything. Me, Alexi, you, your kids, their kids, they'll all die. Mm -hmm. Now, energy can never die in, uh, because it was never born. So where do we go? We transmute that. Now I'm going into some heady shit, but like back to your relationship, you know, the question is, is, is if, and I know it's very tricky because sometimes the ego wants us to run. Sometimes the ego says, oh, this isn't the right relationship because it's not like so-and-so or it's not like blank. my past or it's not like how it's supposed to be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
when in actuality that is the perfect relationship for you because in that very moment it is teaching you about you. It's, it's, it's every time you open your mouth, you reveal how you see the world. Mm -hmm. And so it's teaching you. So if you can catch that and go, ah, oh, this is interesting. I have this up against something. I have it up against relationship goals on Instagram. And so that's why I'm not appreciating my boyfriend, husband, partner. That's why I'm not appreciating because I have it up against this. And here's the thing, if we're playing this comparison game, we will always lose. Why? There'll always be somebody more attractive, somebody's relationship who looks much more shinier than ours. There's always going to be that. There's going to be kids, if you have kids, you're, there's going to be kids that are smarter than your kid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. right? So we get to take the, all of that off the table and put in 110% into the relationship that you're in. And then if you're in that space and, if, and you feel the call that, that it's over, then you step in. Yeah, and I wanna circle back to what you said in the beginning. We're always in a relationship with the self, no matter who we're in relationship with. So if you can truly take that perspective and look at it in the terms of, okay, what is, what is showing up for me in this relationship? Mm -hmm. And if what's showing up for me is attachment, possession, out of fear of loneliness or fear of you know not having a family or scarcity of any kind then that's your work and you have attracted that person to really dive into that work um how do you get past the grief of lost dreams mm. Mm, that's a good question um <laughs> here's the thing is it really grief well that's it so a lost dream it's lost because it no longer held your attention. Yeah. If it's truly a dream, that shit will hold you. Mm -hmm. It will like tap, tap, tap all night on you for decades. Hey, hey, you need to do this. Yes. And, hey. and, 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 and <laughs> let me just, because you just helped me see something. So if it is that, how you get over it is jumping back in mm -hmm. and giving everything you fucking have. Yeah. Because I'd rather something not work out with me giving everything I have and leaving it all on the field, than me sitting in a corner somewhere contemplating what it should have been or could have been, mm -hmm. and sitting on a deathbed or sitting somewhere 50 years from now going, I should have, I could have, I would have. Like, so so the, the two part of this is really, A, is it really lost or did you just drop it? Yep. B, if it is lost, it wasn't having your attention anyway, so what's yeah. on your heart now? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And Cam said, are we coming back to Australia? Sterling, what up? Gaines, define um, what success is. I missed you is. last night. I was getting my acupuncture. Huh. Uh, we will be back in Australia sometime next year. Yeah. In the fall. Probably like August. Yeah. We're having a baby in Feb, so we're going to see. Yep. Um, how to find my purpose. Find find, how do I find my purpose and find out what I love? Um... Well, that's a two-part question here. We believe you're always on purpose because you're alive. And that is your purpose is to live and to keep growing and to keep exploring and mm -hmm. to keep being curious and to keep unfolding and to keep expressing and to keep learning and to keep going up and going down and experiencing all that is life. So we believe that is purpose. Yes. Let me add to that. Mm -hmm. How do I find my purpose? Open yourself up. Say yes. Part B, put an S on the end of that. Purposes, right? Because we're always being used. Mm -hmm. And so this, the, the, the issue that I find that a lot of people have, Patrice, is that they think that there's only one. That, yeah. oh, I only came here to be Steve Jobs and do this one thing. And no, you didn't. You came here, you have many purposes. You have many callings on your heart. Yeah, many missions. Yes. And so, um, and find out what I love, you're already in it. Yeah, just focus on that's what you actually easy. pay attention to. Like, look at what you search online. Look at what you spend the majority of your time looking up, spending your money on, talking about. Those are things you love. How do we know? Based on results. Yeah. Based on how you spend your resources. You love those things. Yeah, we're going to do about four more questions and we got to roll. Okay. Uh, Robbie said, how to stay away from negative things, which looks great in the short run when we still... No, they have a negative effect on life. Okay, so we're not sure what you're talking about, <laughs> but um, things that are enticing that we know are going to have kind of a negative or ineffective outcome in our lives. Yeah. Um, 
you know, sometimes you got to dive into that and actually experience the negative outcome to the point where you're like, well, shit, I actually don't want this outcome anymore. So I'm going to be done with that. Some people need to go that way. Some people need to go that route. Yeah. Some people can just be like, you know what? I can see the result. I can see that I'm not actually going to get the result that I want. So I'm going to say no to that thing. Yes. Um, and some people play the game their whole life knowing what's wrong for them, which we don't like using right, wrong, positive or negative, but knowing the things that aren't as effective for them and they keep moving into them because in a way, the self punishment of that cycle is their excuse to not play full out in life. Yep. So I'll add to that and say, how do you stay? It sounds like what you're talking about is, um, short-term gain versus gain versus delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. And there is room and space for both of those. One of the philosophies that Alexi and I both operate from is say no to the good so you can say yes to the great. Right? Extraordinary. Now, the, the thing to even take a deeper look at is who, which part, is it, is it the higher self that wants to say yes to this thing? Like, masturbating or emotional or uh, emotionally eating or shopping going and having sex with some guy just because you're fucking lonely like is that me is, is that the higher self is that the part of me that has never been hurt harmed or endangered is that the part of me that only knows love is that the part of me that is pure power pure essence pure beauty or is that the wounded self mm -hmm. because if it's the wounded self and you can delineate dif differentiate between those two that's when you have your power Right? Because both of us can wade through what is truly us, right? This, the, the, S, the, the capital S of the self and the lowercase s of the self. Mm -hmm. The lowercase s is the one that's always or constantly trying to stay safe and put you in positions that fill the box that's already been built for you before you even came onto this planet. Yeah, safe, comfortable. Uh, pleasure seeking like the the lowercase s self is always seeking pleasure and pleasure is a prison yep because pleasure is momentary so a lot of people are on the lifelong quest for pleasure which can look like sex food money power uh, influence significance pleasure is like that moment-to-moment -moment thing that we'll never get enough of it's it's the drug that you keep on chasing the dragon for mm -hmm. right and that's the lowercase s when you're moving into like joy and bliss, that's an internal thing. Yep. Pleasure is you need it from external sources and that will be instant gratification. But instant gratification lasts that long. Instantaneously it's there, instantaneously it's done. Uh -huh. It's a sense of relief, right? If we want long lasting pervasive joy and bliss and satisfaction, that is an inward game. Yep. And truly there's not much to be done except getting out of your own way. Fiona, what's your advice on staying committed to love, particularly of the self? What Alexi just said, focus on joy. Mm -hmm. Then you won't have to even ask that question. Because mm -hmm. if you're having fun, then you are so you're, in. it's already self-love. <laughs> you are just in, in um, on life. How do you find what you are really, really good at? Probably. I'm sure you're trying to say at. Mm -hmm. um, and then Leah said, what do you think about those that choose not to do stay in the victim role well what do i think about that <laughs> uh -huh. um i have very strong opinions about victim mentality because i used to live there for a really long time and um it was perfect and it was exactly what i needed on my journey to get to the space i am now but i realized how much time and energy i wasted on being a victim mm -hmm. um, so when i see it in other people it frustrates me because I see that all it is is a shift in mentality and all it is is um, truly like, and it's easy to say, taking 100% responsibility, but truly living that mm -hmm. and actually seeing how you've created everything in your life, whether just up here you've created your response to circumstances you can't control, um, you've created the reasons why your business life relationship isn't working. Mm -hmm. To me, that's so empowering because you're the problem, but you're also the solution. Right, and so many people want to stay in, but the problem is just it's outside of me, and it's so much bigger. And it's like, cool. So you like being there? Like, there's always a payoff mm -hmm. for wherever you're at. You're there, and you're constantly showing up to that space because there's a payoff. Something is feeding that. 
right? If you were getting starving from being in victim mode, you would leave victim mode and you'd go to responsibility because there's food there, right? But if you're in victim mode all the time and your payoff is people are feeling bad for you and you don't have to show up and you get to stay comfortable, you're going to stay there unless you're really willing to step out. And that takes courage. And a lot of people, unfortunately, um, aren't ready for that. And it's not our job to change them. People mm. have to step into that themselves. Mm. Okay, if someone is suffering depression and you have loved them for years and they push you away as it gets worse for them, do you still stay to love them at the expense of your own energy? Mm. I'm pretty sure you already know one of the answers because uh, there are always many answers and it's multifaceted. The thing that I would support you with, uh, Mika, Milika? Malika. Malika is this idea, and I was supporting a friend last night with this and today, this idea that love means staying. Yeah. Like, let that land for a moment. The idea that staying around when someone is choosing to commit a slow suicide mm -hmm. at the expense of your own energy, you're, that's not love. Right? You enable someone when you f placate to that victim mentality. Now, is it, do peop some people have sicknesses? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's, it can be, I don't want to say this, humans are very powerful. Yeah. When, have you guys, oh, here's a perfect example. Have you guys ever seen a little kid fall off a swing or something like that and they bump their head? And immediately they bump their head and then they get up. And then if nobody's watching, they're fine. They're like, <laughs> yay! Right? But if their mother is there, if <gasps> the okay? father is there, what do they do? They cry. Mm -hmm. They lose it. Oh, I'm so hurt. So, one of the best gifts you could ever give somebody who is wallowing in their own self pity, right? Because right you want to look at this you know there are millions of people that live with less than five dollars a day less than that there are millions of people who have less and some of us are depressed because we are watching Instagram and thinking about what we don't have and so it's relative right it's relative so the question becomes Question your idea of what love is. Because sometimes if you just pull the rug away and stop giving them options, then nobody's there to watch them. It's okay. Let me step in. Mm -hmm. And I want to jump on this real quick because we live in a very highly medicated society. And without getting too political here and too activist Alexi over here, um, I'm going to just drop a line that says question everything. Yeah. Question the diagnosis question the prognosis, question what has been written on the prescription, question all of it, look at all of it, because it is an industry. Sickness is an industry. Dis-ease dis -ease is an industry. There is money behind it and there is power behind it. And here's the thing. A lot of people are like, well, scientifically, you know, chemically imbalanced people, that's a real thing. Yeah, it is a real thing. And there's scientific studies from Harvard and some of the best scientists in the world that say exercise is just as, if not more, effective than Zoloft. So, question everything, guys. Because here's the thing. We, again, this is my lesson number three. We keep taking the stories that are fed, that are fed to us from society and saying, oh, well, my doctor, my government, my mom, my brother, my sister, my friend said that this is how it is. Is it? Or is there another possibility? Mm. There are multitudes, millions of stories of people who have been diagnosed with certain diseases and certain life altering things mm. where they could never walk again, talk again, love again, do these things again. And guess what? They did. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they choose to do that. They chose day after day after day to create a new reality. So again, not our job to fix people and to have them get out of the victim mentality of disease, but it is our job to hold people and remind people that we get to question everything and see if there's a different possibility for us. Boom. So. Last question. Kathy, 
I'm yearning to find financial freedom through my gifts and what makes me happy, but not sure that is attainable. So Kathy, um, Alexi and I hold the belief that financial freedom is an oxymoron, mm -hmm. that freedom is an inside job and it has nothing to do with outside circumstances. Um, so I would first change the languaging and I would call it financial abundance. And then, Kathy, I would define what abundance is to me, right? Because you have to ask yourself, how much is enough, right? Is $100,000 a year enough? Or do you need 100 million? Because that'll define what happens next. Yeah. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, let me remind you. And I believe it was Nietzsche that said, those who were seen dancing were called crazy by those who could not hear the music. If there is music on your heart, nine out of 10, there's also music on a few other people's hearts. And we've seen it a thousand times where you had an idea, you didn't take action on it, and then somebody created it. Mm -hmm. They created it because the universe, God, will always vacuum in, somebody will pick that idea up and somebody will move with it because humanity's overall purpose is to evolve. And so in every industry you can name, there are millionaires. In every industry you can name, there are people who are making at least double what they were before they started that industry. Mm -hmm. Triple. Would you be okay with triple what you're making right now to give your gifts? Because if so, one of the best things you could do is find three to four people who are already doing what you want to do in some form or fashion and then model, yeah. don't mimic, model what they're doing and use your unique talents to build your business. And I want to add to that because all that is a yes and that's a firm belief that we have. And if you're truly living your gifts and your passion, how much does that actually matter? Mm -hmm. Like, what is abundance to you? Like, really, again, question everything. Mm -hmm. Like, we live in a society that says we need a bunch of shit mm -hmm. to be happy. Yep. We live in a society that says we need to drive a certain type of car, live in a certain zip code, have certain clothes, have our hair look a certain way, doing all these certain things so that we can be certainly happy. But does that ever actually happen? Yeah. Like think of people that you know that are making the money that they always wanted to make. Are they actually happy or are they just on another <laughs> hamster wheel? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. And she said it, she'd just be happy to pay for her kids' college. Perfect. Now, Kathy, and, and you know, we don't want to step on any toes here, but just know that college was created to create more workers, mm -hmm. more drones, more worker bees. And so this idea that if you don't go to college, you're a loser, I understand from, from a parent's perspective, and this is what our parents did to us, and you know, it's, well, I have a master's degree. Not my parents. Mine did. Yeah. Right? And most of our parents on here, type yes if your parents pressured you in some form or fashion to go to college because you were told that you would be, a, in essence, you'd be a loser if you wouldn't. Or, or if that you didn't. it'd be hard to amount to anything if you, if you didn't go to college, right? Yeah. So this idea, Kathy, is an antiquated idea that no longer fits this society. Right now, there's a 15-year-old that by the time he's 17 will be a millionaire. It's Why? already happening. Yeah. Right? <laughs> there's already like 20 of them. <laughs> yes. So, 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 Kathy, just really, and I understand that it's very difficult to teach what you have not experienced yourself yeah. but hear us let these words land let it come to you and speak to your heart not from I'm bigger or better than you but as a brother from another mother let me mm, inject this uh, this understanding that your children may not need to go to college some may but uh, some may not yes and in and, and struggling with debt yes and college potentially may create more of that debt and so they'll get out and it won't mean shit and yes. it doesn't mean anything right now well and here's the thing it, we really have to look at like you know I'm all for studies and statistics yeah. let's look at results yeah. based on results people with a great education are unemployed like the masses of Millennials that have these amazing degrees yeah. and 200 to 300 to 400 thousand dollars in student in loans debt have no jobs, they're living back at home, but they have these degrees. Pat, 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 okay, you great. Did it. So, so you did that, now what? Yep. And, and we really get to look on the results, and we really get to look at a system that, as Preston said, is antiquated and was set up for the industrial age. Yep. College and learning 
school, being a scholar used to mean learning. It used to mean education. It used to mean expanding what's possible with your mind and with your actions. And we've created a society that says, well, college is all about you go to school, you learn for four years, and then you work and you never learn again. Versus creating a spirit of lifelong learning yep. versus creating the type of child that grows up wanting to experience the world and being curious and learning from all different types of teachers and mm -hmm. learning in the game, learning from people who have come before them who are actually in the field. And I love education. I think education is phenomenal. I'm a lifelong learner myself. Um, and question everything mm -hmm. like why college? Why does it have to cost that much? Why are we forcing our kids to do something that, as we can see, is not actually currently working? Like the story that our parents tell us, well, you go to school so you can get a good job. Well, that's not true anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you go to school so you can get into debt and have a great degree and live at home with your parents and be unemployed. That's the new story. So yeah. now, what story do you want to write for your kids? Mm -hmm. We love you guys so much. If you receive value from this, if you're watching the replay, if you're, if you're live with us right now, if you receive value, when you get off, please click the share button share. and tell people why they should watch this video. Yeah, it's share one of your big takeaways from this video yeah. so that we can actually, for people who are lazy and don't want to watch the video, because sometimes <laughs> I don't. <laughs> sometimes yeah, like... say go to you know minute 33 or something like that. Yeah. They, you know, Preston's so sexy at that minute, like that's, <laughs> that's where you need to do it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so share this message, share why you want to share this message, uh -huh. um, and most importantly, live the message. If anything on here resonated with you, yes. if anything on here called to your heart, jump in and take action. Take action, like live it, experience it in your life. It's the only way we actually drop knowledge into wisdom. Get her done. Love you guys. Love you. Peace.